Mm. All right, here's a charming picture of somebody concentrating really hard on something, whatever it is he's concentrating upon. We want to make this black and white. There's a couple of different ways to do it. So come to our layers palette. I want to right click and duplicate this and I'll call this black and white. I'm going to keep my original layer because if I'm doing spot colors or spot black and white techniques, we're going to need it. Okay. First thing, come to Effects Browser, Color Adjustments. You can do it this way, Desaturate. Okay, but you have very little control over that, so I'm going to come to Edit and do Desaturate. Instead, I'm going to come here to the black and white. Drag it on. Okay, it's black and white now, and we've got control over the brightness. Make that lighter or darker. You can make it more contrasty as well. The thing that I'm interested in is this color wheel here. You see this blob at the top? If you move this around, you start to affect. It's almost like taking black and white photography and putting a color filter in various different places. Like at this point, you can see that yellow bird has got much brighter, but the face is looking a bit blown out here. And when you're doing stuff like this, always concentrate on things like the face. Make sure that's looking like there. It's way too blown out. If I bring it around furthermore towards the magenta part of the spectrum, yeah, I'm getting a much nicer balance of tones on the face. So I'm going to come about here. Let's check the brightness and contrast. Again, I'm looking at the face. Ah, too light. Bring it down again. I'll take it about there. The contrast. About there. And click on OK. So use that color wheel. It will give you a lot more control. All right, now what about this thing called spot colors? That's where you get a lot of the picture in black and white, but it's just small areas of color. I've seen plenty of tutorials about this on the internet, and some of them, frankly, are awful. I'll show you two ways of doing it here, and one is a lot better than the other one. Right, come back to my layers palette. You can see I've got my background layer, which is still color, and black and white on the top. Well, okay, that's straightforward enough. Let's come to, say, our rectangle palette, and I want a nice artistic rectangular selection down here. Do that, drag out an area, click on delete, control D to deselect. There you go, there's the underlying layer showing through, and there's the spot colors. Okay, you can do that, you can start hacking away at your black and white layer, but there is another way of doing it, which frankly is better. So I'll come to edit, undo select, and edit, undo clear. Then control D to deselect that. Come back to our layers palette. You can either right click, or I'll come down here and add layer mask. We've done layer masks before in a previous tutorial. We're going to come back to them again because they are wonderful things. I'm going to come and I'm going to select this little bird figure. I'm going to come to my brushes and I'm going to select black. White's all right. Black leaves a black hole, which shows whatever's underneath. So I need a hard edge brush. and I need it to be smaller. So I come to my keyboard, click on the square bracket key, the left one make it smaller and whoops see a mistake there if I come back up here I, the brush I chose splatters things around so I'm going to press ctrl z to get rid of that come to yeah that looks like a regular brush there I'm going to make this smaller as well and start painting I'm painting black onto the layer mask not the layer itself the layer mask. Make sure you selected the right thing. Like here, if I was to come to the actual image itself and start painting, all I'm doing is I'm painting black. Don't want that. So make sure you're on the actual layer mask itself. You can see it's highlighted with that little light blue line. And carry on painting. The longer you take with this, the better the job you're going to get. And you're busy, so I'll try and keep it quick. If this was an eraser and I was doing this, I'll be, I'll be in trouble. But because it's using a layer mask, I can come back to white, make the brush size smaller, and just paint white back in, which just gets rid of the strokes I just made. So now I can take these sharp areas here, these angular areas, Cut right in there, 
come right here. Like that. Then come back to black and get rid of that area. Try doing that with an eraser. You can't do it. All right, I'm not going to go overboard with this because, well, you get the general idea of what's going on. I just want to get rid of that blue area there because I'm being a bit obsessive. Happens when you're a designer, you get a bit OCD. And just this little bit down here. Oh, let's cut right into there because we know full well that we can go back to black and get rid of it again which is why I love layer masks wouldn't want to marry one but I love them and seem to fit and there you go our nice little area of color there all thanks to layer masks makes things much easier than using erasers and this is how you do spot colors I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.